Hello, Ida. So what exactly is the platform Tinder? According to ChatGPT, Tinder is a popular online dating platform where users can create profiles, browse through other user profiles, and connect with potential matches by swiping right to indicate interest or left to pass. It is known for its simple user interface and location-based matching system. Okay, um, now then, here comes your very next truly quite curious question. Hey, Ida, what exactly is an internet troll? According to ChatGPT, an internet troll is a person who intentionally stirs up controversy and disrupts online communities by posting inflammatory, off-topic, or offensive messages. Trolls often seek to provoke emotional responses from others and engage in arguments and personal attacks. These two answers to these two fundamental questions are, in the end, the reason. Why we as humans have developed globally so much over the recent 20 years, how we have evolved, and that's not always positive. The internet is the reason for it, ultimately. Because, yeah, as she said in English, whoever didn't understand it, what is Tinder? A platform where one can build romantic relationships through simplicity. That means uh, they simply just no longer have that, the new generation, like we had to do it back then. Should a woman seize our attention? That impromptu, that tingling sensation, the urge to approach now for she may leave, to have to carefully approach her, expecting to likely get turned down, or being able to celebrate a victory for having made a date with her. No, actually, we simply just swipe from left to right if we fancy one or don't like one or vice versa. Women do the same. And yes, the thing with the internet, fantastic. Individuals may freely express their opinion, whether solicited or not, harbor hate, can. Incite things and don't need the direct interaction of another, in person. Face to face, face to face. Reckon, because they simply sit hidden behind a computer, anonymously behind an anonymous name, probably still with the beer belly on the keyboard, on the space bar, and getting a thrill because they suddenly go from cowardly to brave. At least, uh, yes, in a pseudo manner, that's what the internet has done to us. Indeed, the vast, expansive internet should never be represented solely in just a negative light. Truly, indeed, we absolutely must, of course, also equally emphasize the many positive aspects as well, what the internet has, fundamentally achieved in these past 20 years. For example, how could a single person such as myself have 20 years ago, not being a TV personality, yet reaching out to so many people out there, just like I'm doing now with my YouTube channel on the internet? How many donations have we already collected together? How much have we already achieved in terms of pressure in comments, what the manufacturers monitor, so they simply improve in what they do? And that is, of course, a great benefit. And because you simply reach so many people on the internet in this way, I want to use this specific part of the video to skip the long video sponsor and to sacrifice for a much more significant issue precisely for the extremely small two-year-old Ivy who truly desperately relies on a critical bone marrow donation. A Carmaniac viewer kindly sent this, Andreas, many thanks for that. And I want to use my reach to highlight that you should please register for bone marrow donation because Ivy is still two years old. And with her, everything truly hinges on whether she identifies someone who can donate bone marrow to her or simply not two years old. Just imagine how tough for their family. I'll link that below in the description. Then you can peek at this. I'm going to fade in some pictures of Ivy so you also feel the whole thing personally. For everyone who signs up for a voluntary bone marrow donation could potentially become a help for Ivy, yet if not directly for her, then for someone else. And that's really a super, super important thing. Proceed this way. So as mentioned, currently no sponsor exists, but a slot's reserved for one in this video to draw attention towards Ivy. And then we shall start right now. And after the internet, naturally, comes the very next thing. What has captivated us? And that is artificial intelligence ChatGPT as an implementation at VW. Um, and what that means, what it can do, how smart it is, whether it should scare us or whether it much rather assists us in using specifically an electric car. This we'll find out now in this video and we'll swat a few other flies with one slap. Among other things, I will show you now. The facelift of the Golf 8, where many are asking, wait, aren't you an electric car channel? Yes. Since we're addressing the issue, whether the Golf 8, meaning its facelift, might replace the ID.T3, what? Yes, many have already speculated. Will the Golf 8 now electric, yes or no? And if not, when? And what else is involved? What, as mentioned, can you expect with the facelift? And you, dear guests, will see even before the world premiere, before the official, the entire interior, which I will show you, whoever you are with any model, regardless of GTI, plug-in hybrid, or regular gasoline, the interior awaits. Will there be such an exciting video? And I have another really awesome thing that I want to draw your attention to. Let's start. A warm welcome to Carmaniac. I'm excited about a channel subscription. Great that you're here.
I would have just right now been ready to stand by the ID7, which is here, as you can plainly see. Indeed, this is a world premiere event, so to speak. We're in Las Vegas. And here, this chat GPT is notably showcased with the ID7 and the Golf. Why don't I, though, as an EV channel, cover the ID7? It's trending. We've made much content on it. Many more exciting developments to come, but let's not get into that. I want to go through it here because this question arises. Is the Golf going electric now? Yes or no? With the facelift, indeed, many ask themselves the question, this electrification and generally the uh, automotive industry has become so fast paced. Past. One might wait three and a half years. Today, cars could be outdated after a year because some update is coming, which you as the buyer of the pre-update don't necessarily enjoy. The Golf facelift. And that might not be such good news for some people though, but it's the good news for others. The Golf's latest facelift is going to be electric, but I've already had a small bit of a chat with Volkswagen. Indeed, not any way longer within this decade. Uh, and that means uh, by 2030, certainly not any longer. As I mentioned, certain foes of the electric vehicles, they assert they just don't want Golf electrified. But it saddens those who say, I'd have liked a Golf and thought it might replace the ID3 eventually. Because the ID3 is essentially a Golf only electric and vice versa. Happens, but no. However, standing by this car, the Golf as a facelift does get the new plug-in hybrid engine. And normally, you'd likely know I don't really do plug-in hybrid car videos, except the plug-in hybrid serves exactly that purpose, and it's something I can champion with my entire being, where I must say, this is, of course, something quite interesting indeed to talk about and convey to people. So, and now, let's take a look at the Golf like this. So size-wise, nothing has changed. I personally just solely concentrate on the plug-in hybrid model alone. That's now the GTI. Club Sport, who's... Performance data we're unable to discuss yet because the world premiere of this car is only, what's today, the 8th? On the 25th it arrives and there I obviously do not want to slap my colleagues in the face by preempting things. What we see of course is the illuminated VW logo at the front that looks super chic. This is quite a significant noticeable update with a facelift and the thorough elimination of the tear troughs from the LED headlights. Those were like at the GTI, right? You know, especially as GTI drivers, you know that? redesigned sportier front bumper. But we're actually talking hypothetically about the upcoming plug-in hybrid that will be available this summer. And then amongst all my colleagues, for instance, where might they actually be then right there? From Matthias, for instance, also being displayed on his channel. So I will go ahead and link his channel up here um, so that you can then on the 25th, the world premiere of the new Golf can be seen with all its engines. The plug-in hybrid will so that hasn't been confirmed to me, but we know that it is so. I've just had a chat with Volkswagen and they said we can't tell, but we know that it will be so uh, specifically from the Passat and the Tigan, the plug-in hybrids get. And that implies in terms of numbers, either 150 kilo dollars or a full 200 kilo dollars of engine power, which is quite substantial already. 272 horsepower emerge when smoothly integrated with a 1.5 liter four cylinder engine and a high voltage battery storing 19.8 kilowatt hours completely, totally, entirely, absolutely irrelevant which uh, specific horsepower option you opt for. So about 150 kilowatt, maybe 200 kilowatt, you'll have 19.8 kilowatts always, and that should enable a WLTP range of over, say, 100 kilometers. Here we see the taillight with these 3D cubes I find quite stylish. I always found the Golf very attractive back then when I bought my Megan RS and an MS and an MS. Uh... How many years ago? It's been 15 years now. God, David, that was a long time ago. And um, um, I've also considered whether I would have preferred the Golf at that time over the GTI or the Megane RS. I opted for the Megane, but I've always liked the Golf, its design language. So you would also then expect that from the plug-in hybrids, just, well, without the exhaust pipes, you'll get the new lights. So it's a pretty cool story. And uh, yeah, regarding the range, what can one say? WLTP should always be taken with caution, which is why you can also. On Evium with us at www.evium.de, enter your accurate real-world values. Those who drive your electric cars, and then users actually see, the more they input, the better. Just like real tangible values are. Look, if you, for instance, need no hint to see, how much does an ID3 really use? Well, drivers give precise figures and you see, a calculated total value, all combined, achieves besides the WLTP, uh, with 19.8 kilowatt hours, I'm not. Unconfident that this car, uh, with, yes, at least in the warm summer months, I would say 16, 15 kilowatt hours can be driven as a plug-in hybrid. Thus, you actually achieve well over 100 kilometers, at least in the summer. Why is this very important, the topic plug-in hybrid? Simply put, even if many from electric mobility sector don't accept it, they either have genuinely no desire for it, but we judge no one, to drive an electric car. The plug-in hybrid vehicle doubtless outpaces. The combustion engine, surely, 
or they might indeed just not be able to because they reside in the city, lack a charging station. This will all get better with time, but there are such people. For them, a plug-in hybrid like this is a fantastic solution because you, you can indeed solve 80% of your daily routine with such a plug-in hybrid purely on electric power. Environmental impact is better. Total cost of ownership for electric vehicles exceeds that of combustion engines, but also better. The 100 kilometer cost, I paid 28 cents per kilowatt hour in Munich for green electricity. There are always providers where that is found. And then of course, you travel cheaper than with a conventional car. Vacationing with one child, trunk space suffices, travel's more affordable. You'll stick with that old gas guzzling car for trips and won't tame the electric car, I presume. Above all, in various certain countries, that's still not so advanced. And the GTE, GTE, I say already, no, the plug-in hybrid of the new Golf facelift can indeed also charge at 50 kilowatt DC. So charge at the fast charger if you're on the go, say, hey, no one's standing there. In Italy, at this very same charger, I'll plug in quickly and then utilize the battery longer. As a brief digression, we do have a plug-in hybrid T7. If you drive in plug-in hybrid mode and use the car navigation and say, I would really like to go to Rimini or perhaps even further then of course the car divides up the available battery capacity so that the battery can permanently support the combustion engine, which means it won't run out after 20 miles on the highway. With our T7, it was somehow 300, 400, 500 miles somehow, where I actually still had battery because he participates now and then, always when you speed up again or something, uh, or just slightly speed up. And so you can truly push the consumption massively down, even with large vehicles, especially with such a one. I dare to say that you on the highway abroad with this thing, at four liters average consumption R, plus of course still kilowatt hours over the battery. But for me, the plug-in hybrid naturally makes more sense these days than a pure GTI. I totally get the GTI hype, let's not kid ourselves. My very first car was a Golf 1 GTI, so I'd be the last one. He says that I have no emotions towards this topic. But for me, the era of the combustion engine in this class is over. So hobby cars, collector vehicles, okay, not quite electric, but actually nothing against it. Above all, with 200 kilowatt engine power the large plug-in hybrid has, you also have enough agility and probably, I would suppose, just barely off the technical spec sheet of a GTI. That's essentially all you really need to know. So you should know starting this summer the plug-in hybrid arrives on the 25th January. He had his world premiere at Matthias. You can then drop by on his channel, for example. Having all data with me, naturally, there's no such thing. And now, let's turn our attention to the truly important part of this video, namely the integration of ChatGPT into the Volkswagen system. Pertains to here and to there, yet we'll do it right here. Because the ID, ID7 interior that you already know, but what you don't know is the of the Golf. Eight facelift. We'll examine that now. Here we go. So we sit here in facelift of the Golf 8. And we have only just recently now talked a bit about how it is with the electrification and so on and so forth. For all those who switch to a plug-in hybrid or simply do not go for the plug-in hybrid because they're a fan of GTI, just like with that one, even though I don't serve this audience anymore with GTI and the likes, nevertheless, the interior remains still the same. You see right here, a major, major facelift has happened. We have right here the screen, just as we already know it from the ID family, a digital dashboard. It all looks definitely more valuable anyway. And a big round of applause goes here for the tactile buttons. Despite the fact that this car is indeed newer than an ID7, over there, we have with the ID7, put that in touch. Here it is tactile, that which I always wish for, because it's just so intuitively usable. I warmly welcome that, for it means too for you, as plug-in hybrid golf buyers, that you have these buttons. For the really very well-functioning assistance systems, which I indeed have already extensively presented to you at driving demonstrations, adaptive cruise, steering assist, lane-keeping assistance and such, this allows for better control. It's a bit old school, but I really welcome that in our T7 too. We have exactly at the same steering wheel spokes in the end. And here we see a huge display. This is the large display model. There are two pieces. That is, so to speak, the pro version. And the pro version is now, so to speak, naturally subject to an additional charge. But even the small display is now with the facelift larger than in the pre-facelift, the largest display. Yes, precisely. So you can put this into proper perspective now. That's what awaits you then when you buy a plug-in hybrid Golf. So ultimately, as already mentioned, by summer 2024, you will basically have more or less an ID model from the inside. It all serves as a reminder, yes, the gear stick, right here. So for those really interested in the Golf, I suggest this now, you guys take an inside look now, uh, just to see. Before the actual world premiere, cup holder, a bit too much hard plastic here. This I would have wished for a bit differently. We do have piano lacquer here too. Again, no real compromise was made, unfortunately, because of course it naturally attracts a lot of scratches, but also fingerprints and the like. At this point, only queasy. 
The Queasy 3-in-1 interior cleaner will do. Yes, with piano lacquer surfaces, of course, much more than with pure plastic or wood surfaces because you just really see every touch here. We have here a slight foam for the elbow. We have from here, unfortunately, already. So this is, once again, not upholstered but covered. So it looks like leather, but it's not from here. It's plastic, looks nice since it's smooth. From here below, it becomes the distinct rough hard plastic again, yet still lined with felt inside completely. It's quite nice because objects lying inside don't make any noise unless they bang against this inner wall because it's not really lined with felt. Here are quite simply all the possible adjustment options for the light. Well, actually, it's quite similar. Um, for me as an electric car driver testing and driving VWs, precisely the same as found in an ID model. We don't have a velour headliner. Um, we actually have here fabric but do have grab handles at each and every position in the end if we also just look back so and yes it is indeed quite beautiful come forward again because i don't really know whether revealing so much from behind in the end cup holder center armrest with a compartment here this is basically the interior of the golf 8 facelift it doesn't matter at all whether gti regular gasoline or even the plug-in hybrid 2 usb-c ports you can find them here and then you can also place the smartphone down here and open it up again here that is then probably also such a mobile phone storage, but indeed already rather slim, or respectively not very tall. Now, however, we're getting to the actual crux of the matter, and that is this system. We indeed wanted to talk about ChatGPT and its comprehensive functionality. In this regard, a thing's extremely crucial. That is to categorize what this actually means. Does this essentially mean now that I driving in my Golf? Eight, plug-in hybrid, or possibly even more so, in an electric vehicle, now, with the system, I, an electric car driver, gain from its more accurate route planning, which now, for instance, refines my itinerary, thereby now, for example, fine-tuning my route further because I am able to input commands such as locate a charging station on the journey that can handle no less than 150 kilolov and a whether no idea XY restaurant is close by, which you like. The answer is no, that's not possible. Why can't it do that? First of all, this chat GPT feature as of the software, at least with the electric cars, internal combustion engines rely on software, including software 4.0. No. So that means uh, ID7, uh, of course, then ID4, ID5 with the updated ID7 platform. They've got version 4.0. No need to visit the workshop, nor is there an over-the-air update. This feature will be simply activated starting from Q2. That means for you, it suddenly just appears if you drive a respective ID model. Here, naturally, there's once more the big crutch for many who have purchased the ID models before a certain date. Yes, indeed, system software updates indeed never surpass exactly 3.5 hours. That's extremely crappy for all those. The we'd like to but can't have because it's not feasible due to hardware limitations. It's not only software, okay? It's like this really glowing slider. It's been around since the ID7. It was a major criticism with the ID3 that the temperature slider isn't lit in the dark and you can't see it where you need to gently touch. That came then. You can now, but not from an older VW, uh, ID4 model, so old, ID3, ID4. Take the display from the ID.7 and then have it installed afterwards because it also requires specific hardware for that. And that would be much too expensive to rebuild. That means illuminated slider and this 4.0. That won't work. If you own a car from a certain model year or ultimately the date of manufacture. It's frustrating, of course, I see that. Totally grasp the annoyance. Vent in the comments, express your genuine anger because surely manufacturers are reading along. We have indeed already. Seen often that VW there truly also listens quite well, how they have modified the route planning and voice software based on the entire crushing criticism. Perhaps it helps someone someday that it's not such a two-tier society. Did you buy your car early? and place trust in a beta test vehicle, then truly you've drawn the short straw. Your feature's charming, self-made. In hindsight, you can't use it. So it's not gonna happen over there, not in the workshop, but it's just there. How is it that simple there? There's a cloud service at Volkswagen through which, yes, also, this voice software operates. That simply means you issue a command and it then goes to the cloud from the exact moment when ChatGPT is operating in this cloud the vehicle will then consider, can I now initiate something with this voice command? Or perhaps is it too complex for me? Could you perhaps be able to say, for instance, Hey, Ida. Set cabin temperature to 25 degrees. All right. I'm setting the temperature in the left front area to 25.0 degrees. Hi. Did you hear, David? She actually knew that I am speaking here, just like so she set up for me. Not to you. You're still at 22.5. That's no feature for which you need ChatGPT since the car can do that anyway already.
Just as I tested stuff in the ID7, like for example, tell me a joke, or what sound does an elephant make? In my Mercedes EQS, that's what an elephant sound, there you go. Um, or meow, asking of the cat. Well, indeed, there are already such gimmicks, but there might be more complex things. The, the system doesn't understand. And then it forwards that to the chat GPT also within this cloud further. And that, of course, happens in milliseconds. And then you will get that answered by chat GPT. But the actual key point now, pity for the moment, but potential for development is indeed the good news. This, in fact, isn't um, actually quite completely merged with your uh, in-car navigation system. We know at VW, for all those who are new, um, at VW in general, with the software, with the newer ones, above all, as you direct navigate me here, there, then he navigates there. Plans the route, indicates where to stay still, how much charge you have, how long charging, what percent charging. You see all charging points integrated, right? Here in the GTI, you don't have that now, but he also highlights a charging point here, Eitz, for instance and then plans your entire route. This is in fact really quite amazing how it does indeed seem to work, but even more impressive. Would be if of course now the chat GPT actually somehow knew when you say, I like having a cappuccino at Macca's because it's good. Find me a charging station over 150 kilobyte, where a McDonald's is extremely very close by, he just can't do it. Um, why? Since everything is all safely stored in the cloud, right? And not integrated with the system. How fascinating. You uttered a word as if the car listens. You said McDonald's. McDonald's. E but what the reason is that I don't know because there stood McDonald's when I merely said McDonald's. Hey, please find me a McDonald's. Maybe it's because of the hay. But earlier he did that for something else. But in the end, maybe not wholly. Now he doesn't, does he? Hey, find me a McDonald's. Um, by the way, I have to unfortunately pronounce it very American. So, sadly, I must do it this way so the system gets me because we're on an American back end. We are right here. As you can clearly see in Las Vegas, Viva Las Vegas. So, right? Um, and that's why I was also told, ideally, if one can pronounce it in American. So the system comprehends. But just what is expected of us now? Let us simply try it out with ChatGPT. Hey, Ida. I need insulin. Sorry, the desired channel could not be found. Starting the online search. Ah, okay, warte, Moment, Entschuldigung, jetzt habe ich sie unterbrochen. Hey, Ida. I need insulin. Sorry, the desired channel could not be found. Starting the online search. Please tell me what. So, for instance, I forgot my insulin in the end. Sorry, no web station found. Please modify. Greetings, Ida. Ida. <laughs> Hello there, Ida. Uh, I need some medicine. There are multiple search results. Could you please select an entry from the... So she has just now found a few pharmacies for me, thus drugstores close by. That was not completed by ChatGPT though, why not? Because it simply didn't say so according to ChatGPT. The system, especially due to robust German regulations, must indeed reliably always tell you that the very precise result of which, what you've just asked, comes through ChatGPT. Did it not come now? It came from the car because it's smart enough for it. But let's just please kindly say, hello there, my very cherished dear Ida. Tell me a story with a bird and a rabbit. According to ChatGPT, once upon a time, there was a bird and a rabbit who became unlikely friends. The bird, with its bright feathers, loved to fly <laughs> high in the sky, while the rabbit, with its soft fur, enjoyed hopping around. The what is the purpose of doing such a thing? It is for when you have kids sitting in the back, you can have a story effectively told. Of course, the car can't do that without ChatGPT. This has indeed, of course, nothing to do with the complexity of an electric car when you drive it. So, won't support you because if you ask for a charging station, car searches. Should you inquire using questions too extremely complex, it simply won't manage to handle it since it is not actually fused with the car's electric route planning system. That's why it will not help you. So it's always kind of like, hey, Ida, Tell me something about the story of Las Vegas. According to ChatGPT, the story of Las Vegas is one of transformation and reinvention. Originally a small desert oasis, it rapidly grew into a bustling city known for its casinos, entertainment, and vibrant nightlife. The construct is what ChatGPT delivers. It's ultimately a Wikipedia, an entertainment medium for on the go. If one wishes that you ask questions that you, um, 
yourself no idea when something crosses your mind? You wouldn't play with your phone, recall David's words yesterday, for instance. What's the gain of that? Because I can use ChatGPT on my phone indeed. Yes, you can, but you have to pick up your phone and fiddle around. You're not meant to do that, meaning if driving a car a long distance and it crosses your mind, I just wanted to prepare something, a speech somehow. So deliver a speech. For that purpose, I really must prepare myself thoroughly. And there. I know absolutely nothing right now about the French Revolution. But one must add, one has to try it out first, how ChatGPT integrates into CarPlay, for instance. Whether you must pick up the phone, because then you might have it in CarPlay, on the display. But then you can just click on the app. And there you can still talk with ChatGPT. Yet you must read again. Precisely, it's not fully integrated, but it'd still be interesting attempting to work out how, through CarPlay or perhaps something, even the app, from the iPhone, for instance, into the car integrates. So where the difference lies, ultimately it's just that you now have, so to speak, an assistant you just have to keep. Maintaining your full focus on the road, keep, I have it answered. So not everything, but probably the most important things, things like just tell me something about the French Revolution. She informs you, you certainly cannot actually read it back naturally because it doesn't show that to you. You just have to sort of like carefully listen and take it in as if you're talking to someone. So this is the chat GPT implementation at Volkswagen. Basically, what awaits you there? You can now write in the comments whether you find it firstly frightening because what should the car, so to speak, know more or whether you think this is indeed a genuine benefit for you or whether you might go ahead and say, hey, I honestly expected a bit more. I belong to the latter because I would have naturally liked it. But one must naturally give the whole thing time to develop. If this whole thing directly is very special for electric car drivers who from many Dependent on various things while on the move, it would be a tad more sophisticated. That one. Could simply give commands. The thoughts racing through your head as an electric car driver, but a standard system can't possess. Good news, Volkswagen already said they are now going through major learnings. That means it will naturally look completely different in two years. This is now the established status quo for ChatGPT at Volkswagen in the implementation process. Completely irrelevant, whether with a combustion engine or in an electric car, it all depends, just on the software version. So these are all the details before the official world premiere of the Golf 8 facelift, but rather, of course, with the emphasis on ChatGPT. I just briefly mentioned it. Feel free to comment below what exactly your take on the current situation is. Now, with the latest ChatGPT update, I consider that to be quite good support. However, personally, as an electric car driver, I just couldn't yet really work with that specific amount. So I'd say this. It's not really such a big leap forward compared to what I already have on my car or what some cars already offer. You can, of course, ask any knowledge-based questions, which naturally you can't do with other cars in the same intense manner. You might ask, um, where does Mark Wahlberg live? No idea if you're currently in Las Vegas because he lives in Las Vegas. So exclude the address. Other things like ChatGPT, for instance, won't do if you, for instance, you could possibly say, I just got a harpoon in my upper arm. What should I exactly do? Leave it in or yank it out. Then ChatGPT will decently inform you. I simply can't answer that because ChatGPT legally cannot give you an answer. Because when it says pull out and you pull out, you bleed out, not great. So it won't react to stuff, nor address any medical questions generally. And it won't even reveal where Mark Wahlberg lives. Even if the address on the internet is known, where Mark Wahlberg resides in Las Vegas, the chat GPT won't answer that. So there are still legal regulations. Moreover, it's a slimmed down version and perhaps doesn't tell you quite as much. It's like if you ask chat GPT directly in the browser or on your phone, it's certainly in any case a benefit, not least for families when traveling, that the kids are getting annoying. You just lack the creativity to come up with a story. So you say, hey, come on, tell the story of a rabbit and of a brown bear who are in a relationship and the brown bear has cheated on the rabbit. So with a fox, uh, then shall we say chatterbox, uh, lovely children's story, yes, I think so too. And that specific method indeed works. But we really must, I truly believe, wait. So it's absolutely a big sweep. Until the whole thing is just integrated into the car's EV infrastructure, I believe it won't take long. Next year already, it will probably be quite possible that you just completely, completely individual preferences can dictate, like my example just now with the McDonald's near your charging station. So that really was it with the world premiere of the Golf 8 facelift. Please don't forget this one thing. Sign up for the stem cell donation. Remember little Ivy, two years old, links below in the description box. It's incredibly vital. That's why, as mentioned, there's no sponsorship in this video. Yes, and at Evium, you'll find info on electric mobility, all for golf enthusiasts, and then perhaps somehow say, yes, perhaps electric car, there you'll find really everything, and we are with Evium, the only truly singular world-class platform globally, where you, when you gaze at a certain car, can, even in a mask, 
efficiently add the insurance booking, you may apply for a personal loan as well as additionally schedule a test drive, everything in one mask. That's a very sophisticated IT system, which only we have. Therefore, EVs stand out. And as mentioned, all facets of electromobility, price comparison between combustion and electric car, very important. Should you find yourself suddenly in a leap, just casually swing by and sign up for stem cell donation, as I previously mentioned. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That makes me happy. Many thanks. And until next time, we're going to uh, play roulette now and gamble away absolutely everything we have. No, we won't do that. It's gambling, not good. Naturally, we won't.